Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi there. Good morning. It is Monday, April 8th, and it is Eclipse Day. It's finally here. Yeah, it's Mark, right here. I mean, oh, this was supposed to be hanging down. Oh, that, that's like that. a casual thing? Yeah. Should right. I just leave it in my pocket the entire you, newscast, you can. too? Is absolutely. A... We're hopeful today. We're absolutely hopeful. We... I know the weather doesn't look like it wants to play nice right now, but we are five hours, 31 minutes, and 37, 36, 35 seconds away <laughs> from the big total solar eclipse. And here's the thing. Oh, Oh, we're in Fredericksburg. I love this live camera shot right now. We're in Fredericksburg and you can see the crowds. They're getting ready. And look, there's shadows out there. That's a good sign, Sarah. And I honestly, I see some parts. I don't see, it's not completely cloudy, Mike. And that looks like some good news. Yeah, now you, you notice off in the distance here, there were some of those little high clouds yeah. out there, which is fine. I mean, you know, there, there's plenty of sunshine. Different situation here in town with a lot of the, uh, the low clouds that are hanging around here as of right now. Temperatures, we are at 71 and boy, a bunch of humidity. That humidity really moved in overnight. 67, that bottom number, that uh, dew point temperature. And throughout the day, we are going to make it up to 80 later on. Now, as far as the aquifer, we had gone up a little bit over the weekend, went back down, down three tenths of a foot in the allergens. Oak, which is still on the high side, but nowhere near what it was last week when it was 25,000 plus something like that. Mold and pecan are all on the low side. Another look at live cam right now. And again, we've got all of these kind of low clouds that are really socking things in here. A whole different picture than what we saw out there in Fredericksburg. And here's the visible satellite picture. And you can see, first of all, notice the movement is coming from the southwest up to northeast. That's the high clouds that are sliding in. The low clouds are coming from southeast up to the northwest. But again, in parts of the hill country, we are seeing um, a lot more in the way of some sunshine. So it is looking more promising out there. Uh, 60s and 70s around much of the area right now. And throughout the day, some, you know, patchy drizzle, from San Antonio Southeast is going to be possible. You know, a couple of thin spots here and there. That's here in town up in the Hill Country, a little bit better situation. Then we're going to be on the lookout for some uh, potentially strong storms later on today. The atmosphere is going to be pretty volatile later on today, so we'll have to be on the lookout for that as well as tomorrow. One thing we're also going to be on the lookout for later on today is the traffic situation out there because we're, you know, planning on a lot of folks being on the roads and folks at Transguide are going to be monitoring it all. And out there right now, RJ Marquez with the Traffic Authority. How you doing, RJ? Yeah, Mike. Well, things looking pretty good out here for all of our folks there at Transguide. And of course, Texas is here as well. They will be monitoring the roads over the next uh, 12 to 18 hours to make sure that uh, we do get people in and out smoothly, you know, before, during, and especially after the eclipse, because we are expected to see a lot of traffic in the after, in the later hours after, uh, you know, we do get the opportunity to watch the eclipse out there. So again, we are live at the Transguide Operations Center, and you see the cameras behind me. Things are very busy here as we get set for the next couple of hours, but there are some ongoing situations to let you know about right now on our roadways. So let's go ahead and pull up our Transguide cameras real quick and show you what's going on. First of all, we had that one uh, we had that one shot earlier showing you the traffic situation out there at I-10 and Kerrville. Again, things looking pretty quiet out there, so that's good news for all of our folks that are maybe heading out. And right now, as you see, it's uh, pretty empty out there, in fact, uh, but we do expect things to kind of get a little bit busier out there. Uh, we do have a crash, though, let you know about near the Pearl area. That's going to be at 281 and uh, the San Antonio River. And that's uh, looks like we are starting to get traffic moving through this area pretty well. So that's uh, good news there. Now, the ongoing situation or developing situation we've been following has been the situation at I-10 at 37. And let's go ahead and show you that camera there real quick. Yeah, now we still have that 18-wheeler caught fire earlier this morning. Um, and we still have crews out there, at least a couple of main lanes blocked in that area. That's going to be affecting all of our traffic. Um, from the I-10, I-37 area out there. So here's a quick look again. We have the maps of our crash, 281 southbound, St. Mary Street, but we are starting to get traffic moved through this area. One thing to note, on the far northwest side, we do have a crash out there at 1604 and I-10 in the Six Flags area. Of course, there's going to be a lot of people headed out there, probably just to watch uh, some of the clips later on. But uh, the rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good. Again, a little bit quieter throughout our morning because uh, we didn't have as many people on the roads. Maybe some people went ahead, took the day off, and a couple of our area school districts also decided to uh, go ahead and cancel school this morning. 
due to the uh, due to the eclipse that's coming up. So we're back here live again, our Trans Guide Operations Center. We're going to be speaking with uh, the TechStop spokesperson Laura Lopez in just a little bit, answering a couple of questions that you might have before you guys hit the road. So that's going to be coming up in just a little while. But for now, I will send it back to you guys in the studio, Mark and Sarah. Hey, Marquez, live over at TransGuide headquarters here in San Antonio. Thank you, sir. Thank you, RJ. Here's today's 9 at 9. The U.S. is ready to defend its assets if Iran attacks them. U.S. officials predict a significant Iranian attack on American or Israeli assets in the Middle East, and it could happen as early as this week. The potential danger comes after Israel attacked an Iranian consulate in Syria last week. We've been hearing the hints for months about several interest rate cuts are likely this year, but now economists are thinking the Fed may scale back those plans with the economy still showing signs of strength. Another key indicator is coming this week with Wednesday's release of the Consumer Price Index. You have one week left to get your taxes done. The tax deadline is next Monday, April 15th. If you owe and fail to file by the due date, the IRS will issue a 5% penalty for each month that you're late. And if you file an extension by April 15th, you will have until October 15th to file your taxes. Millennials and Generation Z are experiencing a new wave of anxiety when it comes to medical costs. According to a new study by insurance firm Assurance IQ, 67% of Gen Z and 62% of millennials avoid going to the doctor or hospital because of the price. That's compared to 46% of Americans overall. More than 8 million bags of laundry detergent pods are being recalled by Procter & Gamble. It affects bags of Tide Pods, Gang Fleets, Ace Pods, and Aerial Pods. The seal on the bags could split and let children get into them. A single ticket sold in Portland, Oregon matched all of Saturday's Powerball numbers. The jackpot had climbed to $1.3 billion, which makes it the eighth largest jackpot in lottery history. The Oregon lottery director said no one in Oregon has ever won a prize on this scale, so everyone's excited. The winner has a year to come claim the prize. You've been hearing it for weeks now. Today is the day of the total solar eclipse from Texas to Maine. Hotels are booked, highways are crowded, and some places have even issued a state of emergency ahead of the big event. And everyone is hoping the weather will cooperate. The next solar eclipse in the U.S. will be in 2044, but only some of the upper Midwest will see it. A wild finish to the Valero Texas Open. Akshay Batia celebrated too soon yesterday, hurting his left shoulder while pumping his arms on a 12-foot birdie to force a playoff. He recovered to make birdie on the first extra hole and win the Texas Open over Denny McCarthy to earn a trip to the Masters. The Spurs forced double overtime last night against the 76ers, but Philly would outlast them 133 to 126. Wemby had a career high, five three-pointers and added six assists. He has 42 double-doubles this season and 238 block shots. Next up for the Spurs, the Memphis Grizzly tomorrow night. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Everyone is counting down to the total solar eclipse, and we're really hoping, as we've been saying, the weather cooperates today. Yeah, just a little clouds parting mm -hmm. would be nice. And so we have crews around the northwest side in the hill country today, including meteorologist Adam Kasky and Justin Horn. You guys have been broing out all weekend getting pumped up for the eclipse. Yeah. I, I, I love seeing what you guys are doing out there, guys. And our eclipse candle, it's working. <laughs> it's working. Look at our sky. Can you can you get a shot of the sky? Look at Blue that. skies, baby. Blue skies. Nice. Right? <laughs> Don't let that keep candle this baby go out. Burning. No. No, 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 no. I've got the lighter <laughs> in my back pocket. Just keep it going. <laughs> keep her going. Keep her going. Oh my God, we are so excited yeah, this morning. Are. I woke up. Well, Justin woke me up. I did. <laughs> I like to sleep in. <laughs> and I was like, I thought we were going to go a little bit later. Um, but then I got up and I had this like nervous anticipation you know, like on your wedding morning like there's a big right. event and you're excited but then you're like i'm yeah. also kind of nervous and then he ran to the door he's like just come out here i did pointed at the sky we had breaking clouds the clouds were breaking up they still are correction justin goes 
oh my god, what's wrong? What's, what's happening? Wrong? What's happening? What's happening? You know, and man, I didn't I'm tell him. And I just go, get out of here. <laughs> he, he was worried about it. We're excited, but the crowds behind us yeah. here are also very exciting. We're starting to see foot traffic build. Yeah, for people here. Not a whole lot of vehicular traffic, but oh. definitely the foot traffic is picking up. Yeah. Um, and even talking to the police officer uh, on the bicycle earlier, who was saying, you know. The crowd at this time of day is kind of like a regular weekend day yeah. during, you know, peak tourist season and whatnot. We have not seen a whole lot of oh, oh, traffic jams. Don't you don't go, go out. out. No, we, <laughs> it's got two wicks. One's still alive. We're it's good, y'all. We're, We're good. Okay. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of traffic jams or anything like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's been good. And I, I think we're going to start to see more people here probably within the next couple of hours. And then... It's all gonna happen, Adam. It's oh all God. gonna happen. So the low stratus was, you know, burning off pretty quickly. It's more yes. like a low fog layer that just lifted and then is breaking up quick. It's a very thin layer. Yeah, but we do have some mid alto cumulus and some high cirrus above us, and that's, that's the okay. wild card. But we'll take that. That's okay. I'll take that any eclipse day over the low stratus. Amen. Oh. Okay. We're gonna be here live all day. Well, most of the day. You won't be able to get rid of us, okay? Okay. It's going to be awesome. Join us later. It's going to be great. We're going to be moving around. We're going to be talking to people. Everybody's so excited. Meeting people from England, from people are here from France, France. Germany. Poland. Poland. We met some Poles. Yeah, we did. Yes, yesterday. Okay. okay I should guys. say a fellow Pole, right? A fellow Pole. I said Nostrovia! And we got all, we, you know, anyway, whatever. I we'll talk more later. Just wish you guys were more pumped up than you already yeah, are. Yeah, I... <laughs> Justin, get out here. What? What's wrong? I love that. Thank you guys so much. And keep that candle lit, please. All right. So here's a look at where we have crews at today. KSAT has you covered. Steve Spreeser and Jen Tobias Strusky will be live in Bernie. After the show, Mike will join Fiona out at the Rock at La Cantera. Me and Sarah will be live at Owie Elementary School in Leon Springs. Adam and Justin, as you saw, are living it up in Fredericksburg. And Courtney Friedman will be out in Kerrville. Oh my God, the bros. The bros are broing. The bros show is going to be fun to watch. <laughs> it's 909 and 71 degrees still ahead on GMS at 9. Well, besides keeping an eye on the weather for the eclipse, we're all going to be monitoring traffic after the eclipse is over. Bandera County leaders are worried about the headache that could be. When we come back, how construction closures on Highway 16 in particular could have an impact on your trip. So we have a lot of articles to check out on ksat.com regarding the eclipse. One of them is how to take pictures of the solar eclipse with your phone. I had a viewer message me about this earlier this morning. NASA experts say to think twice before taking pictures of the eclipse. They say your phone sensor could be damaged if it is pointed directly at the sun. So NASA says hold those eclipse glasses in front of the device when shooting at any point other than totality. You can read more advice about this on KSAT.com. Welcome back, Cordy Friedman, photojournalist Billy Caldera out in Kerrville for us today to cover the solar eclipse. They probably just got there and about 30 minutes ago while they were driving up I-10, they came across a very busy rest stop. So they pulled over real quick and they got to talk to some of the visitors here getting ready for the eclipse. Check it out. We got a big group here. Where's everyone from? I'm from Vernal, Utah. Hagerstown, Maryland. And in Dale, Virginia. Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia, near Washington. Holland, Pennsylvania. Holland, Pennsylvania. Outside Germany. Oh, Frankfurt, Germany. That's I'd say. Oh. Yeah. Well. You win. <laughs> you guys win. <laughs> Are you glad you're here? How long did it take you? Oh, well, it took us. It's a, actually an entire vacation, of course. <laughs> but yeah, we were. We've been in Big Bend and. Uh, so you traveling around. Home, you made a trip out of it. Right. Okay. Yes. Are you glad you're here? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even with the clouds, it's going to be worth it? I think so. Hey, yeah. It, it, Look, it's, it's breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we see the sun. <laughs> Please stay. Stay where you are. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you guys are here. It's supposed to break up a little bit. Yeah. So we're all crossing our fingers. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. This Thank was you. amazing. Right. Millions of fingers crossed. That looks yeah. like a lot. That looks like a, an astrology group just getting all their cameras and everything ready to go. Yeah, they've got all the astronomy gear, that's for sure. A lot of folks from outside Washington, D.C. I wonder, I, obviously there's no way to get a, a you know, exact head count, but how many people from not only around the country, but also mm -hmm. from 
internationally have that's true into our area if you're watching and you're in town email mike osterhage uh we'll take a head count <laughs> one yeah. two three uh also the other thing we were talking about you were talking about you know putting or glasses in front right. of right if you do that though you got to be really really careful you know yes you can look through the phone lines but make sure you don't kind of you know have the other <laughs> eye looking past it so right. yeah and especially obviously if when it's leading up to the eclipse you got to have your glasses on That's right you know if there's some high wispy clouds out there you know it looks pretty looking pretty good in that live shot out there in uh, Fredericksburg but you know even if there is kind of that that sort of veiled sunshine out there wear your glasses as it's going in through the eclipse phase don't wear them while you drive because no you can't see anything. Yeah, you can't. So, all right, take a look outside, and boy, can we get Fredericksburg weather here from seriously? Adam, Justin saw. Yeah, these low clouds are hanging around here. So above that, you've got all those those high clouds that Justin and Adam were uh, showing. But you know, there's a little bit of sunshine squeezing through here and there. Here's the visible satellite picture, and as the sun finally comes up, and again, this is what they're seeing out there. These are all the high clouds coming in here from the southwest and up to the northeast. Uh, a lot more breaks out there further in, in the uh, hill country. A uh, couple of little thin spots. You know, this is what we're banking on is some of these thin spots. There will be these high clouds around definitely throughout the day, but it's those these low clouds that are the the real pesky ones out there. So uh, even a little, you know, with some of these low clouds, could be a patch or two of drizzle. I've change the just cloudy to mostly cloudy. trying to be a little optimistic that we will see more holes in these low clouds. We just have those high clouds out there. So those few thin spots here and there temperatures will be dropping down. It is going to get dark when that does. It's going to be a very quick sunset basically, and it will last well, depending on where you are. If you're on the hill country, about four minutes here in town on the northwest side, maybe just a couple of minutes. Then we get into this afternoon and there is going to be a chance for some showers and thunderstorms out here. So here's the uh, satellite picture. This is the infrared picture. And again, like the the visible satellite, you can see that it we've got the high clouds coming in here from the Pacific Ocean around that that low, which is pumping those in here. But it's these low clouds that come in and those are the, the ones that are real pesky. However, what helps us out, or at least in the hill country, you've got the escarpment right here, you know, that the, the land that kind of comes up as in toward the Edwards Plateau, and that helps to maybe keep some of these low clouds out of the hill country for better viewing and on the the northwest side. So here's a computer model though and you can see those few uh, clouds, the holes in the clouds out there to the northwest and then as we go on in toward eclipse time, yeah, there'll be some high clouds hanging around here. Got to keep our fingers crossed obviously here in town. Then we're going to be on the lookout for some rain. We'll start to see a few scattered showers around here and even a couple of thunderstorms. Some of these thunderstorms uh, are going to be on the strong, potentially severe side. Notice how there's not a lot showing up, but the atmosphere is very, very volatile later on today. Looking at some of the numbers that measure the atmosphere and if something does try and pop, they can get strong very quickly or potentially severe. Cloud cover is working in our behalf today. If you had that intense sunshine later on this afternoon, yeah, a lot of these storms would be breaking out. Despite that, there will be a few of them. Overnight, somewhat of a break in the action, then it picks back up. So even tomorrow morning, we're going to have to be on the lookout for some of those stronger cells. And then all that moves on out of here, and look what happens by midweek. We clear out fantastic with another front. So why couldn't the eclipse have been last week, have been yesterday, or on Wednesday? Unfortunately, so 80 high temperature today. Yeah, a few thin spots in the clouds here and there. It looks promising in the hill country. I wish Adam and Justin would send some of those candles down I-10. And we'll have a couple of those stronger storms late this afternoon, as well as then tomorrow. Some of those stronger storms. Looks like it's going to be a wet commute tomorrow morning. Front comes on through here. Absolutely gorgeous then for the rest of the week with those nice, pleasant mornings. Beautiful afternoons. We take what we get with the cloud cover. We do. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Regardless, it's still going to be very cool. It is very cool, yes. Okay, let's head back out to Transguide. That's where we find RJ talking about the heavy traffic that's expected, especially after the eclipse is over, RJ. Yeah, that's actually something we're going to talk to uh, Laura Lopez, the uh, spokesperson here for Text Out here in just a little bit. We are starting to see a little bit more people on the roadways as we sort of get the sun come up here. So, Laura, what are the conditions looking like right now? 
Well, of course, we're starting to see a little bit more traffic on I-10 heading west to the hill country. But other than that, it's been pretty normal Monday traffic. So um, that was something. Obviously, a lot of people are taking the day off to go out to the hill country. But uh, we did say before, uh, well, they were throwing it to me out here, was that to also be prepared for some traffic after the eclipse. So what has been kind of the messaging that you guys have been sharing with the public? If you can leave later... That would really help with the traffic congestion because we know once the eclipse is done that people are going to want to leave. So we're asking people to stay a little bit longer if they can so that way they don't get caught up in that traffic congestion. Yeah, so maybe just kind of hang out a little bit. I mean, it took years for us to get to this point. So might as well. It won't hurt another couple of hours if you just kind of spend some time out there. Exactly. You know, we have to ask people to leave early, to stay put during the eclipse, and to leave a little bit later. All right, Laura. So I know we've been sharing a lot of uh, information with all of our folks, all of our viewers, but again, just want to reiterate some of the safety tips uh, during the eclipse. Uh, go ahead and share a couple of bullet points if you can. Well, for one, we don't want anybody to be parked on the shoulder or in the median. Uh, we are also reminding folks not to wear their eclipse glasses on the roadway, on the highway. So find a safe spot that's off of the roadway so that way you can get a good view of the eclipse. All right, that is great stuff. And Laura's been here yesterday. She got at 6 o'clock this morning. Text out all of our folks here at Trans Guy just keeping an eye on the roads this morning. Thank you very much, Laura, for being with us. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. Thank, Thank you, RJ. Thank you so much, RJ. Right now, 922, 71 degrees. We'll be right back. <laughs> Stupid. All right, we're uh, back here in Fredericksburg, Adam and I. We're oh, at yeah. Market Plots. And oh. I think one thing we really enjoyed during this whole event is getting to talk to people from all over the country. Just talking to people, We've it's got great. folks from D.C., San Antonio, Minnesota. You betcha! North Carolina. San Antonio, San Antonio, San Antonio Colorado. Yeah. Arizona. Arizona. Tucson, Germany. shout out. Where? Germany. Germany, Germany. yeah. Oh, all the way from Germany. All over. And Turkey. Get out in here, everybody, get in here. And David from LA, get in here. Come on, Germany, welcome. Welcome to Fredericksburg, welcome to Texas, yes, Turkey. You. How long was your, your trip? It's about 16, 17 hours, oh, wow. direct flight to Houston. And when did you arrive in Fredericksburg? Oh, right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah, right now, we just got here. And David, what about you from LA? 19 hours. 19 hours. Did, 19 you hours. didn't do it straight, yeah. did you? You don't have to answer that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know the speed limits are high on I-10, you know. Okay, from Germany. Germany. When did you plan on coming here to Fredericksburg? Three years ago. Three years ago. Oh, three three years. years. Yes, because we know the, uh, the date. Yeah. When it happened. Yeah. Have you ever been to Texas before? Yes, uh, yes two times. Okay. In Dallas. Do you say y'all yet? What? <laughs> okay. We say y'all, you know, like you all. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's learning. We're yeah, getting yeah, there. We're, we're getting there. We're, we're warm you up. Warm me up with that. <laughs> where, well, are you, where are you guys from? We come from New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah, I brought my son to see the eclipse, yeah. How long, oh. was, the, how long was the trip? Uh, well, we left on Thursday last week, so yeah, it's been a while. And how long ago did you plan it, this? Uh, actually, quite recently. I'm, yeah, yeah, a couple of months ago, we decided uh, we're just going to come. That is a long way. You traveled across the ocean, around the world. Welcome to Texas. What do you think of Texas so far? What's your name? Nice. Wait, uh, uh, Rufus. Okay, yeah, and what do you think of Texas? Nice. Nice, yeah, nice. yeah. that yeah. is right. It's true. Oh, sure. well, the low clouds are breaking up a bit. We still have the Alto Cumulus, which will stick around. It'd They'll come fine. and go. They'll come yeah, and go. Fine. It's gonna be a good day. I made a commemorative eclipse thermometer, because I make thermometers. Um, and it's 76 degrees out here on this beautiful day. That's great. We're so excited, man. Oh, we're, yeah. we're gonna have live coverage coming up at 12 to two. We hope you'll join us. We're gonna be going straight. You can join us on the live streams, whatever app, uh, whatever platform. We'll be here in Fredericksburg with all of our friends. We hope you'll join us. And I, I'm gonna show off one of the t-shirts I picked up too, because they yeah. made, some places made their own commemorative shirts depending on the shop or art gallery you went to. So That's good. Awesome. Shout out to LA, Turkey, New Zealand, Germany, Tucson. We've got everybody. We've got <laughs> it all up in here. Welcome. <laughs> all right, on three, give me a y'all. One, two, three. Y'all. Nice. I love it. Nailed <laughs> it. Back to you guys. All right. The guy from Germany.
him and he's like, I'm not quite sure what I'm saying on live TV, but I hope it's okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh, the energy level, he's got that eclipse energy. Yeah, he does. Adam is like I'm ready to go. I'm jealous. I wish we could be in Kerrville, but the good news is with those guys there, we're we're already there. We're gonna be there all day. <laughs> okay, it is 928 and 72 degrees. There's still a lot ahead on GMSA at nine. Including a look at morning sports. David Sears joins us with highlights from the Spurs double oh, double overtime game last night against the Philadelphia 76ers. Plus the Brahmas, they had a crazy comeback this week and to beat the Memphis Showboats. David will have that recap of the game as well. In case you didn't know, the eclipse is happening in four hours, 57 minutes and 50 seconds. We are excited here at KSAT. We have crews all over the viewing area in that path of totality. And Mike, we just took a look out at it in Fredericksburg yeah. with Adam and Justin and their skies looked okay. Yeah, not surprising out there. It's a lot of those high clouds like they were talking about, which will be, you know, will kind of come and go those high thin clouds out there. We still have our low clouds sticking around as you can see. And by the way, the, the eclipse commences. Obviously, we've been talking about totality being 130, 132, you know, depending on where you are. About a quarter after 12 here in town is when it's going to just start to move in front of the sun and, and work its way across there. Anyway, look outside. Yeah, a little bit of sunshine is uh, trying to squeeze through or a little bit of a bright spot maybe, but we've got all these low clouds still hanging around here. Temperature right now stands at 71 degrees, so we've only warmed up a little bit. And of course, the humidity has come back in here with all these, you know, helping out with these low clouds. Visible satellite picture, and you can see, yeah, there are a lot of thin spots up there in and around Fredericksburg, further out in the hill country. And these are a lot of the high clouds that are sweeping on in. You can see those are moving from southwest up to uh, northeast, and, and we've got all the moisture coming on in here. So it's just going to be a, a matter of when these stubborn low clouds just kind of move on out. But we'll have some thin spots here and there and uh, 75 degrees at noon. And yes, temperatures will be dropping down uh, as the uh, the eclipse takes place out there. And a lot of folks are out there. And of course, the duo themselves, the dynamic duo, I guess you can call it that, Adam say, and I Justin. So, hey, uh, oh. you know, the, the lady that's there from Turkey, I visited Turkey years ago. Yeah, the yeah. only words I remember were how to say thank you very much. It's Kokteshika Adidam, oh, so you can tell her that, so yes. I think I'll use Google Translate rather than try to remember that, but I do appreciate it. <laughs> yes. And, and by the way, thank you, Mike, for holding down the fort. Yes. We appreciate you. You're most welcome. I'm going to be heading out to, to uh, the rock here in just a, a little bit, but what's going on out there? You guys look oh, yeah. like you're having fun. <sighs> What isn't going on out here is the question, honestly. The people just keep streaming in. It's good to see. Yeah. It's not overburdening the town no. at all or the resources, talking to the police officers. No, no, we did a little shopping. We did. We got out with the we crowd We talked yesterday. to everybody. We did. And we got some, we accessorized. <laughs> we, <laughs> we did. Check uh, the fit check, fit check, check the fit. Oh, it's good. We're good. <laughs> Extra large, baby. And that, that's a word for outfit. Now it's like what the kids say. Fit oh. check. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I learned something new every day. I did, I did too. I just learned it from my wife the other day. Show your shirt. Oh, it's okay. Show me your shirt. Show me your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's what this is. Nice. It's an eclipse, y'all. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this is my favorite one. I love it. They, uh, this is at a local art gallery, and the lady who operates it, an artist, uh, they designed this and another one yeah. themselves. So these are these are all well, yeah. like unique to the area too, um, and that's what's fun about it. Limited supply. Yeah. Had to get a uh, had to get a commemorative T-shirt, and the other one there. Maybe we can run and get one before our live stream at noon. <laughs> um, it's it. I got I got mooned. I got mooned. I got yeah. mooned, and yeah. she was telling us. She said, "Yes, this gentleman was in from Japan and didn't understand what I got mooned, and he's scratching his head." So she goes, "Oh, you know when you do this?" Oh boy. And he goes, "Oh, I get it. Yeah." And he goes, "I'll take the other one." <laughs> so ah, just good crowd. I good thought, people. I thought there. you might tell that story. <laughs> it's a good story. It is. It is. But there are so many eclipse themes. Uh, Store like stuff uh, being sold in the stores here. Yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, and our candles still burning. C is. Candles. Still, I'm gonna grab the candle. Oh yeah, grab you, yeah. It. It's okay, Ken. You're still good. Burning. You're good there. The clouds are still not. At least the low clouds are still not here, so we're good. We just got some mid-level clouds, which is okay. I feel like it's a the procession in church. Like, don't let this don't. candle go out. <laughs> just the one. <laughs> we're we're down to one wick, but okay. it's still burning. We still and it's, it's going to keep partying. 
the clouds. It's going to be good. It's going to be on a, our eclipse day. One thing we do have a question about, though, is traffic doing OK? It's OK here, but what is it like in San Antonio? Let's uh, let's toss it over to RJ. All right. Yeah, Adam, uh, Justin, you guys are having a great time out there. It looks like a lot of fun. And, you know, I know you guys have the candle going. I will say that there is some history with this. When we got Victor Wimbanyam, I remember getting one of those Spurs Wemby candles. Those things really do work. So the power here, <laughs> let's manifest some great weather out there as we take a quick check of the roads. And we are seeing, sorry, we are seeing some traffic start to build up here. I-10 at Ralph Fair Road, all of our traffic, all of our people headed out to the northwest side right now is to take a look here at our trans guy cameras and check that out this is not due to any sort of accident or a stalled vehicle this is just our congestion and our traffic that we're seeing going up on the westbound lanes right now and i think we have another shot here at uh, the i-10 at bernie in mile marker 542 same situation a little bit further up the northwest side and we have that camera up right now as we see some of our traffic that's going away from us uh, headed towards parts of the hill country on the northwest side so things are already starting to build up there in terms of some traffic as we take a quick look here at our maps and we already seen traffic kind of build up on highway 16 we know bandera road is going to be very busy headed out there and i did want to also focus on that because there's been a lot of talk about traffic on 1604 I-10, but there's also going to be a pretty good buildup of traffic headed out to the parts of Uvalde, Castorville, Highway 90, headed out far west, and we mentioned right there, Highway 16, Bandera Road is going to be very busy. Highway 281, also going to be very busy for all of our folks headed north, maybe going to head out to uh, parts of like Johnson City, things of that nature, also maybe headed up to the Austin area to check out the eclipse. So we're back on Transguide real quick. Again, I-10 at Bernie East, mile marker 542, seeing some a little bit busier traffic there and then we also have a little bit of buildup already I-10 at Ralph Fair Road. All right, we are at the Transguide Operations Center. Things have been kind of building up towards this moment right now, so we're really excited to see exactly how things turn out. Remember, they are, will have courtesy patrols, main input patrols out in the heavier traffic areas. So yeah, things are looking pretty good out here, and we appreciate the folks here at Transguide and TxDOT letting us hang out with them throughout the morning as we get set for Eclipse Day. And once I get back to the station, guys, I'm going to go light one of those Wemby candles because you know what anything Wemby eclipse it's it just got to work out and Wemby is probably tall enough uh, to block an eclipse <laughs> at this true. point all right guys back to you guys in the studio <laughs> thank you RJ there's actually a meme of Wemby like blocking the oh, eclipse I believe it. it's so good I it's totally so good it. well of course it's eclipse uh, but a chance for the teams and players to put their competition in the dark. Yes, we're talking about the Spurs. Kind of a precursor to today in sports style. David Sears is here with a look at that uh, very tough loss last night. But they fought. They fought, fought, fought. Yeah. Until yeah. they didn't. <laughs> Until the very end. All right, so yeah. let's start with the Spurs. Still trying to reach that 20-win threshold. Last night hosting the Philadelphia 76ers. The Spurs. Just trying to keep learning from their experience. The Sixers trying to improve their playoff position. The bad news is Spurs lost Keldon Johnson in the fourth quarter. He came down and rolled his ankle and didn't finish the game, may not even finish the season because there's only four games left. The Spurs had a double-digit lead until the end. Nicholas Batum makes a three-pointer to give Philly a one-point lead. Nine seconds to play. The Spurs respond. Julian Champigny knocks down the three. So the Spurs are in the lead, but then they go to a timeout. And they forget to play a little defense. Whoops-a-daisy. Wide open with 2.7 seconds left. Philadelphia's able to tie it on that inbounds catch and layup. We're headed to overtime at 111. We go to the second overtime. Spurs took a three-point lead on the three by Malachi Brennan, but Philly just takes it from there. How about that little dunk right there? Okay, so Spurs end up losing 133 to 126. So here's the schedule for the rest of the season. Not just for the rest of the week, this is the rest of the season. Memphis Grizzlies and Oklahoma, they're at those two places. And then they take on Denver and Detroit here at home to wrap things up. Still got a chance to get to 20 wins. Still got a chance. All right, big afternoon. San Antonio Brahma's on the road in Memphis. They were down 16-0 in the fourth quarter to the showboats. Quarterback Chase Garbers went 29-40 for 287 yards, three touchdowns. All to different receivers, including a 10-yard score right there to Cody Latimer for the lead. San Antonio got the lead with three seconds left. They go on to win 20 to 19. Next up for the Brahmas, it's the St. Louis Battle Hawks. 
back here at home that comes up Sunday at two o'clock in the dome. All right, let's take you to the Texas Open final round and what a day for Ashke Batia. The young man had a six stroke lead going into the final nine holes. Denny McCarthy chased him down with eight birdies on the back nine to get into that tide. Top of the leaderboard, both players were able to hit pretty tough birdie putts on the last hole to send it to a playoff. And a weird thing happened in the playoff. Batia like hurt his right there. He hurts his shoulder right there when he was celebrating. That's his fiance right there. So we get to the playoff hole and McCarthy does this. Ouch. How many times have we done that? Hit it into the creek. So all that he has to do is par the hole. He does. He wins. He gets like millions of dollars. He gets a trip to the Masters. Here's winning putt. He gets a trip to the Masters. Plus, he gets some boots and a really nice trophy from the Texas Open. So there he goes. He is a winner. That's his second win on the PGA Tour. Here's a look at the leaderboard as it fences up. No. So now he's going to the Masters for the first time, and that means the Masters starts basically today. There'll be a lot of guys out there. So, all right. The Women's National Championship game featured the best women's college basketball player, Caitlin Clark, and Iowa against the undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks. Iowa was the last team to beat Carolina last year in the championship. The Hawkeyes went on a 10-0 run early. Clark got a three. She ended up with like 20-plus points. But South Carolina settled in, came back with defense and some big-time shots. They went on to win it 87-75. They finished, get this, 38-0. 38 and 0 and the national championship is theirs and of course tonight it is Purdue and UConn the men's national championship game it tips off at 820 tonight so there you go there's a quick wrap up of Spurs on Eclipse Monday I'm sorry you had no sports to talk about that it was a big weekend wasn't it man I tell you what so between the Brahmas and the Spurs and then the Texas Open yeah, pretty good stuff. So a lot, there there's go. a lot going on. David, thank you. Right. Thank you, David. 943, 72 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Let's take a look, see if we can see any parts from the clouds. Mm, maybe. Like at the very top of your screen, those low clouds are there, but those high clouds are tiny. Maybe some tiny parting there. Hey, but there's some parting in the clouds up in Fredericksburg. Mike's going to tell us our forecast when we come back. It's always a great day to go to the zoo. Zookeepers and researchers will be keeping a very close eye on the animals during today's eclipse to see how they respond to it. There is little known about how zoo animals react to eclipses. During the 2017 eclipse, a zoo in South Carolina, animals started to prepare for their kind of end of day activities when it started to get darker outside. The flamingos are just kind of hanging out right now. Yeah. They're, they're in their normal line. Earlier before we went live, one was flapping its wings. Maybe it knew something's up. They, the animals always know. They have an instinct, don't they? They did do. You, did you see those two walking along and they're in perfect step? Go, they're right behind that tree right now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They were it looks totally like in sync. They're marching in sync. Yeah, their legs yeah. were, oh, not anymore. See a little known side effect of, of pre-eclipse activities, Mike. Oh, oh. Attack. I'm just kidding. But walking and stuff like that. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, this picture is not really good looking. We're looking off to the uh, north and west. Now, there are a couple of light spots here and there. So what we're hoping and just looking at uh, at <laughs> what the uh, official observation is, clouds at about 1900 feet, 2500 feet, which are these low, low clouds right here. And then you've got the ceiling up at roughly 25,000 feet. Here's the the visible satellite picture and note how most of this looks like it's coming in from the southwest but how, notice the two different directions here so some of the clouds are moving up to the northwest and others are moving this way the ones moving up to the northwest are the the lower clouds and these high clouds are coming on in here and those are the ones that you can see on the water vapor imagery going back to yesterday we had that sunshine and then the moisture started to really come in here aloft in the atmosphere. But this is that what Adam and Justin are seeing out there in Fredericksburg. Just those very, very high clouds, very thin clouds, a lot of holes in clay. You can see the sun quite well. So that's good eclipse viewing weather. Uh, we just got to get rid of some of these low clouds out here. So we'll still keep some of them around for the next bit. And then they are going to be starting to thin a little bit. I think we should see some more, some more holes in these low clouds here. And of course, 
temperatures will be dropping down when the eclipse does take place and will warm back up. And then now it's a good thing. I'm keeping some of these clouds around here because hopefully that will block sunshine later on this afternoon because we have a pretty volatile atmosphere which is setting up. So here's the uh, the forecast for uh, the rest of today. We are going to be seeing again a lot of clouds around here. Some of those breaks, especially up to the north, some of the thinner clouds. Then we're going to have to watch out for some of these uh, thunderstorms to start to develop as the afternoon rolls on. And some of these notice how they are coming in from the southeast, maybe on the strong, potentially severe side. Not going to be a whole lot of them out there, but if anything does pop up, it can turn uh, strong to severe very, uh, very easily. And because of that uh, volatile atmosphere, a little break in the overnight hours, then early tomorrow morning, some of this rain does tend to pick up again. We're going to have to watch out for more of these thunderstorms to develop around here. And this will be in the morning hours tomorrow and then even going through mid morning. And I think that's going to be the best opportunity to see some of this is going to be in the first portion of the day in the morning hours. Then we'll start to clear out somewhat. And then in behind that, we've got Great stretch of weather. Here's the uh, severe outlook. This is a two on a scale of one to five throughout San Antonio, uh, the kind of the middle portion of the area. And then that threat carries over into tomorrow, basically tomorrow morning and a very good chance for severe weather up around Austin and northeast of there tomorrow. Here's the low. That's the one off to the west of us. That's what's throwing all these high clouds on in here, which those aren't necessarily a bad thing, but it's those pests clouds got to get rid of. So we keep a lot of those around here. Then the rain overnight tonight or late this evening, late the, this afternoon into the early evening and then early tomorrow morning and maybe even a couple of stragglers late. But that front's going to move on through here and that's going to clear things out very nicely for the rest of the week. Once again, boy, the timing darn because it's great. The rest of the week, we're going to wrap things up after this. Stick around. Oh, baby, it is the day. Total <laughs> solar eclipse is upon us. By the way, really quickly, before we forget, we have the live stream coming up. Yes, don't forget, we're going to be live from 12 to 2 today. We're going to have multiple live streams from all over the area, from Bernie to San, Northwest San Antonio uh, to, I believe, Owie Elementary. Yep. And then we're up here in Fredericksburg. Uh, so make sure you join us. We want to watch the eclipse with you, and we want to you know, enjoy it. And, and we're going to be enjoying it with all our friends here in Market Plots in right. Fredericksburg as well. I went down to the Good Art Company and picked up the other yes, t-shirt. Yes, you did. Here it is, the unveiling. <laughs> da -da -da -da. There what do y'all think, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I got mooned. It's a good one. Locally, it's unique. Locally it's made. locally made. Lo the, the inspiration was obviously here. We know the inspiration. It's good. Mm, exactly. And, here we are. Well, so good, yeah, man. we've got our tchotchkes, we've got the candle going, and we're gonna be live along with our other crews just streaming 100% on KSAT.com and yeah. KSAT Plus, which is a separate app for your phone, KSAT Plus. Yeah. And now KSAT Plus is on Samsung TVs, which is nice too, so you can get that app. You can literally pick and choose what you yeah, want to watch. Yeah, who do you want to watch? Yeah, I mean, what's going on? You think we had fun now? You just wait. Just wait. <laughs> just wait. <laughs> Oh, you guys are All about right, to get so we still whole... have some mid-level clouds, but we've got some sun, so. You guys are about to get a yep. whole bunch of company. You should see the Transguide camera on I-10 heading out towards Fair Oaks Ranch right now. It's a parking lot. Are we going to show that shot? Yeah, we are. Is Look it? at that. That's yeah. well, that's 1604. Cool. Yeah. So that's folks heading towards I-10 right now. Right. It looks like we've got a stalled big rig or something. But guys, the outbound lanes of I-10, if we can jump over to I-10 at Ralph Fair Road, you see a long line of traffic that's headed out towards Bernie and the rest of the Hill Country. Take my word for it. If we can't get the camera up there, there's quite a parking lot out there, outbound I-10, right past uh, the Rim Shopping Center. Right, and Mike, Mike's gone. <laughs> he had to go. He saw those trans guy shots. He's like, I gotta go. I gotta yeah. be live at noon. <laughs> so he left this for us. Uh, chance of storms later today, today, tonight, and into tomorrow. Be extra weather aware. He says some of these storms could be strong to severe. Especially when you're leaving, viewing the eclipse. Oh, hey, sure. happy viewing, but don't go anywhere. We got your eclipse coverage for the 